Hello, welcome back to my channel, or welcome for the first time if you're new here. My name is Bryn, and I make videos about queer stuff. I know it's been a little while since I uploaded, um, I think maybe like five or six months. That's mostly just because I don't have much to say. And, you know, in my last video I did talk about contemplating stopping making videos. I still don't quite have... And I still don't quite have an answer on whether or not I'm going to keep posting. It's very nice out today and I felt like making a video, so here I am. <laughs> so I kind of wanted to talk about kind of like a major, I don't know if it's major, but um, a shift that's been happening in my identity. I did make a video kind of about this topic maybe like a year-ish, maybe like a year and a half ago, I don't know. I wanted to talk about my connection with femininity. That's something that's been on my mind a lot recently, and so I kind of just wanted to talk about it. So here I am talking about it. <laughs> so a little bit of history if you're new here and you don't really know. Um, I came out as a trans woman when I was 18 years old. And I started HRT just before I turned 20 and then I came out as non-binary at 21. So I've been out as non-binary now for like six and a half years or something, but I've been out as trans for almost a decade, I think. I've been out as trans for about nine and a half years. So I kind of wanted to retrace my steps on like what I felt about being a trans woman and then being about non-binary and then like where I'm at now. So to trace all the way back to my childhood, there were a lot of signs <laughs> that I was trans. One of them being that I told my parents that I wanted to be a girl. <laughs> And I also just liked stereotypical girly things. Um, I loved the Powerpuff Girls, uh, Barbie dolls, all that kind of stuff. Unicorns, a Little Mermaid. Yeah, so I was very expressive about that at a young age, but it was kind of met with pushback from my family. I was born in 1996, so there wasn't like a whole lot of understanding about trans people. Also, I say this later in the video, but I thought I should bring it up now that I was raised in a Christian household. So that also played an effect on how my parents viewed the whole gender nonconformity thing. For those of you who don't know, I have two moms. Um, one of them is trans herself, but she didn't come out till I was about 10 or 11 years old. And so that's why like, you know, when I was a young kid, it was still kind of like, there was still pushback on me expressing femininity. And yeah. And then by the time that she came out, I had suppressed a lot of everything or learned kind of to hide it. So I didn't start like officially questioning things till I was like 17. Uh, I was a senior in high school at the time. And the only representation that I really had uh, was my mother. And I had a friend in high school who was a trans guy. Now in regards to my trans mother, I didn't feel like I related to her um, in a lot of ways. I did relate to the fact that she was trans. I remember when she came out to us, she talked to my brother and then she talked to me and my sister together. And I remember her telling us that she felt like a woman or felt like a girl or something. And I remember like kind of being confused why it felt like such a serious conversation because in my head I was like obviously like everyone everyone feels that way um <laughs> so I did relate to her in that sense but when it came to the way that she experiences womanhood and specifically expresses womanhood or femininity it felt very different than the way that I wanted to express it and the way that I continue to express it and it was, I guess like 2013, 2014, around that era. It was like when Tumblr was really big and all of the like trans representation that I had for people who were assigned male at birth was very like, like stereotypical straight woman. Like almost everyone, like I watched a lot of YouTube then and all of the YouTubers that I watched were like, gay, usually like gay twinks that transition to straight women. 
and I was a gay twink, but <laughs> I didn't necessarily resonate with like stereotypical femininity or traditional femininity. And there were some ways that I did, but a lot of ways that I didn't. But with that experience of traditional femininity being really the only kind of trans representation that I had, that was in my mind what a trans woman was supposed to be and how she was supposed to look and act and all that kind of stuff. It did not occur to me that trans women could have the same amount of expansiveness as cis women do. You know, cis women can have short hair, they can, you know, let their body hair grow out, they can not wear makeup, they can wear men's clothing, all this different kind of stuff, and they're still women. I hadn't really gotten to a point where I understood that trans women could do all of those things as well and still be women. So originally when I came out as a trans woman, I felt a very strong need to portray the part of what I believed a trans woman was supposed to look like and be. So I was basically coming at my transition from a perspective of performance and it was very external rather than internal, which left me feeling very unsatisfied and very like disconnected from life and also confused because I had this knowing, I had this understanding that like being a guy like wasn't right for me but being a woman in that sense also felt very very jarring and just off like it wasn't it didn't resonate with me in the way that I thought it would. So as time went on I met other trans people and I met non-binary people. The first non-binary people that I met were all assigned female at birth but I had it in my head that the rules were different for people assigned female at birth than they were for people assigned male at birth. And so I still felt disconnected from that title for a little while. And even once I adopted the title of non-binary and I resonated with that, it still took me a while to really embrace androgyny because I kind of always aligned androgyny with masculinity and especially the way that I interpret my androgyny is does have like masculine traits like I really I do like men's clothing and whatever and like other stuff too but like that like and if you've seen my other videos like a lot of times I'll wear backwards hats and like stuff that's not like stereotypically feminine and tends to be more stereotypically masculine and so while I actually really resonated with a lot of non-binary people who were assigned female at birth it took a long time for me to connect that the only difference between me being non-binary and someone assigned female at birth being non-binary was a body part and the identity had nothing to do with the body and it took a long time for me to understand but once I understood that I really felt like I was coming into myself and understanding myself as non-binary uh, like when I came out as non-binary and then so I came out in 2018 and then 2020 was the pandemic and I've talked about this in some of my other videos but during the pandemic I moved to State College Pennsylvania which is like where Penn State University is but because COVID was there or was there <laughs> because COVID was everywhere um the students weren't there they went home and so basically there was barely anyone living there because it's a college town my brother was living there which is how I moved there but it was really nice because I was able to express a lot of myself um, in ways that I hadn't felt comfortable because <clears throat> I lived in the same area that I did growing up. I felt like if I expressed androgyny or anything that could be considered masculine that it would <clears throat> erase me, people would think I was detransitioning, people wouldn't take me seriously, blah 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 blah. But when I was living in State College there were barely any people there and the people who were there didn't know me so they didn't know what I was born with and so I really got to express a lot of androgyny which was really really helpful and very empowering and very important to me understanding myself. That's when I started wearing backwards baseball caps, it's when I started letting my leg hair grow out, I started wearing a binder, um, all the things that you would see like a trans mask individual do, I was doing and I felt really really good doing it because um, it was something that 
I resonated with. After like six months or so in state college, I moved back to Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, which I grew up in Harrisburg. It's not that far from there. Um, I had been dating somebody prior to the pandemic. We got back together. I moved in with her, but I still continued to express my androgyny in the way that I wanted to. <clears throat> and I felt really good about it. Also, while we're on the topic of my ex, um, that relationship was really important to me because I, I associated liking women with masculinity and I associated liking men with femininity. And prior to transition, like I said, I was like a gay twink and I wasn't attracted to women um, physically. I did have emotional attraction to women, but I didn't quite understand that there was a difference. I just knew that I felt really full and really alive around certain friends of mine. And <clears throat> so it wasn't until I came out as trans that I started understanding my attraction to women better. And on top of that, my dysphoria was going away. And so there was an ability for me to connect with women on a level that I hadn't been able to do prior to transition. So anyways, I was dating this woman, we were living together and it was, in terms of gender, it was very, very validating. Um, the woman that I was dating um, at the time identified as a lesbian, I don't know. I, th I think she might just use the word gay or pan or something, I'm not sure really what she uses now, but at that time she identified as a lesbian and even as she was kind of like changing her labels, um, she still heavily favored women. So that was really validating for me, uh, especially being uh, pre-op because I had a lot of internalized stuff tied to my downstairs and like what that meant as far as my identity. There was like this like ongoing battle in my head all the fucking time. So dating somebody who was a lesbian was very validating and it was also really uh, good for me to go through that because I was able to actually understand the feelings that I had about sapphic relationships and like why, like what those feelings really were and I got to experience what I needed to experience and it helped me understand myself more. But yeah, so we broke up in February of 2021 and then I was finally living on my own that summer and the following year in march of 2022 is when i had bottom surgery which if you're watching this it's almost my two years of from bottom surgery i was gonna make a video but like it's literally like nothing has changed since the one year mark so i don't know if i'm gonna make a video but yeah it's been almost two years since bottom surgery anyways i had bottom surgery in march of 2022 i I had a lot of internalized beliefs around my gender, around femininity, around transness, around trans femininity, and I, I was raised Christian. I don't know if I said that, but I have videos on that if you're interested in watching. But I was raised Christian. Uh, whenever my mom came out as trans, my parents got divorced and I was raised by my uh, cisgender mother who is like not very supportive and so that was like rough and I had a lot of internalized things as well as like as well as what I had learned as a young kid and um having like all the like feminine things basically taken from me like there's a period of time where they like let me enjoy these things and then at some point like they were like no that's not how little boys are supposed to be and so I kind of like lost everything that made me happy um, and I internalized the idea that the reason I lost it is because I deserved to lose it and that like being feminine is like bad if you're born a boy. So that was like very rough and I carried those beliefs with me for a long time and leading up to surgery I had a lot of fear because I you know grew up with a lot of transphobia because my family was not supportive of my trans mother transitioning, which, <clears throat> you know, from, you know, my other side of the family's perspective, I can understand their frustration and their anger and that they like didn't really understand it. But regardless of whether I can like empathize with them, um, it did have like a negative impact on the way that I saw trans people and the 
validity that I held the trans people. And so I had a lot of fear in my mind that someday I was going to wake up and regret transitioning. And all of my other like steps in my transition were very subtle um, and not necessarily like permanent, permanent, other than like HRT makes your chest grow, but I have a small chest. Um, you know, I changed my name, but I could always change it back if I wanted to, all this kind of stuff. Whereas with surgery, like obviously you can't just like grow that back. So there's a lot of fear with that. But the, like going into surgery, I actually felt really, really content. But after surgery and stuff, I still had a lot of internalized beliefs to deal with. And so what I have been dealing with now, after like 20 minutes of fucking talking, <laughs> is processing my femininity and what that means to me. And it's been really rewarding and really <clears throat> healing. So post-op, I have been able to connect with femininity on an internal level and there's not like blockages because the body part that I had prior to surgery felt like a blockage to me. And I'm sure that's rooted in like internalized transphobia and stuff like that. But regardless, like I, I still think it was the right decision to get bottom surgery because I feel good and I feel like me. And if you're interested on like how I came to the decision to have bottom surgery, I am pretty sure I have a video somewhere, so I will link it somewhere. But post-op I, I felt a lot more free to connect with femininity. I felt like I was allowed to connect with femininity and that was really important and that's something that has been really really rewarding. So what I've noticed recently is I have been really um, like questioning or um, intentionally focusing on like what does femininity mean to me? What does my femininity mean to me? And that's where I'm at now. So I've been thinking about this a lot. Um, and I had this like moment, I think it was in December, like either November or December, but I think it was December. Doesn't matter. I was walking around this mall and for whatever reason, I got like super dysphoric. Like like, I had not felt that way since prior to transitioning. Um, it was like, I think it was because I was dressed very androgynously, but then I, like, was in, like, a femme, like, state of mind or whatever, and then I just felt, like, so, like, disconnected, and it was just, like, horrible. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I felt like I was, like, 17 again, and it was just, like, really bad. I was like, okay, like, I need to kind of confront this like because it wasn't just like about femininity it was about like womanhood like I was like like at that like when I was walking through the mall I felt like I wasn't being seen as a woman and it made me very dysphoric which was surprising because I had felt really comfortable in being non-binary but like in that moment it just like hit me really hard that like like womanhood is like important to me and it's something that I need to kind of dive into. So that's been something that I've been processing these past like four months or whatever. I also want to track back just a little bit. I know I talked about dating my ex who's a woman um, and like what that meant to me and I figured out or well I figured out I was a lesbian back when I was 21 but I didn't like I wasn't like secure in that and I was still trying to understand it even though like I kind of knew I was a lesbian but I didn't feel ready to like accept it yet so anyways I like fully accepted it like maybe like a year ago or something I have a video that I will link up here about that <laughs> that's also really intricately tied with my gender identity it kind of feels like um I think I might have explained it like this in another video at some point, but you know, like, you know, there's bounce, how there's like bouncy balls, they're like small and they have like kind of like tie dye color, but it's like, it's like two colors, but they're like swirled together. That's kind of how I feel about my gender and my sexuality. Like they're two different things. They're two different colors. 
um, or whatever, like two different things, but they're like swirled together and you can't necessarily pick them apart from one another. And so me coming to terms with being a lesbian um, really helped me come to terms with my gender identity. So it's been a bit overwhelming um, trying to process these feelings because there's a lot of good feelings that come up when I start to accept my femininity and my girlhood and my womanhood. There's a lot of there's also a lot of negative feelings because there's a really great sense of loss that I hadn't quite processed. I used to feel like Oh yeah, like I know when I was a kid, I liked these girly things. But now that I'm really connecting with myself uh, in that area, I kind of have to grieve the childhood that I missed. And I know I, it's not unique to trans people to grieve your childhood. I think most people grieve some aspect of their childhood. You know, if you don't have a good relationship with one or both of your parents, if you didn't get the opportunities that you wanted to get, if, you know, you were forced to, you know, go with the status quo instead of being yourself, like regardless of what that looks like. I think it's a very common experience to feel like you, to feel like you missed something in childhood. And so that makes me feel like, not like good, it makes me sad that like a lot of people experience that, but it also does help me feel more human um, instead of feeling like alone and isolated, like I'm the only one that's going through this. I recently started trying to heal my inner child, I guess, and do things that I wasn't allowed to do as a child. And so I got like a shit ton of stuffed animals. I watched a bunch of Powerpuff Girl episodes because that was one of my favorite shows as a kid. I <laughs> I bought hot pink uh, bed coverings or whatever. So I'm sitting on it right now and I'm very happy with it. It feels really nice to have the things that I didn't get to have when I was little. I've also been dressing more feminine because, um, I mean, it's about to be hot girl summer and in Maryland it's like pretty warm. Not, not like super warm, but it's like definitely warmer than it normally is in Pennsylvania. I don't know, wearing like short shorts, wearing camis like this. Um, I still wear, you know, flannels over top to give that like tomboy look or whatever, but um, yeah, I've just kind of like been embracing femininity. It also, back in December, um, I came out to, or came, I don't know if I would call it coming out, but I talked to my very close friends, um, about <clears throat> pronouns and names. So, um, my legal name is Bryn with two N's, but I've been spelling it just with one N because it's more like androgynous, but I not publicly, like on social media and stuff, I haven't gone back to double ends, but I have been like spelling it with two ends and like talk to my friends that like, could they spell it that way? And that's been really, really nice. As well as adding she, her back into my pronoun. Honestly, right now I kind of just like just she, her, but I'm not like committed to that yet because I want to give it time to see if like, because I don't know if it's like one of those things where I have this like like non-binary version of me and then I have this woman version of me. Uh, and when I say non-binary, I know that that can include womanhood. I know like it's a very, very broad title. But like for me and like the way that I view my non-binary is like very like gender absent or gender neutral or whatever. So because of that, like I feel like it's like separate from my womanhood. But Anyways, I don't know if it's like I have these two parts of me and like right now I'm just expressing this part or if it's kind of like I've moved on from this part and I'm now settling into this and this is new and this is fully me. Um, so that's kind of what I'm still <clears throat> process, not really processing, I'm just kind of giving it time to see like what happens. But I mean, it's been pretty consistent now for like a few months. So I feel good about it. I think 
what I've really, really noticed. Um, I know in my last video I talked about feeling your feelings and uh, embracing fear. And that's something that I've been really trying to be intentional with and really trying to do. And I think I've been doing it really well. I think like learning to just be, like I've really, I don't know, I've really been connecting to an internal part of myself that I was searching for externally, if that makes sense. And so I feel very like content with where I'm at and I feel very, I don't know, just very secure. Um, and I think too, like I said, like my, like being a lesbian is like very intertwined with my gender because I think the way that I was viewing womanhood for a long time, especially like when I first came out as trans, was viewed through the lens of what a straight woman is. And not that there really is like a definition for either one of those things um, in terms of like how you look and stuff like that. But I think being able to expand what I understood womanhood to be helped me understand myself better. Because I, like, like a good example, I guess, of like not understanding the expansiveness of like womanhood is like, so when I was in high school, when I was a freshman in high school, I met a girl who I became good friends with who was a very, very androgynous lesbian. Like, like I thought she was a boy when I met her. <laughs> and a lot of people, you know, thought she was a boy and whatever. And I took that to mean that like, she wasn't a girl basically like because she was so androgynous and it was like in my head she was non-binary that's like the way but i didn't know that word then but like that's kind of how i viewed her as like genderless or in between genders or something like that <clears throat> and it was simply because of the way she dressed and so i didn't quite have the understanding then and i didn't get the understanding for a long time and i didn't you know get the understanding for a long time that like your womanhood is not attached to the way that you dress, like the way that you dress is expressive and it's like what it means to you. But you could have somebody who dresses and looks the way that she does and identifies as a woman and you could have someone that looks and dresses the way she does and identifies as non-binary or a man or like whatever. And <clears throat> I, I think honestly seeing like trans people and specifically like lesbians and sapphic people I think has been really really helpful to me. I think I might have talked about this in my last video but in September I went to um it was basically like camping for lesbians it's called Lesapalooza <laughs> and I went there and it was so fucking nice it was like I don't know how many people were there but it was like a decent amount of people like maybe like 200 people or something <clears throat> and it was just like a bunch of lesbians, uh, a bunch of women, a bunch of non-binary people. And it was so nice to be in that space because I don't get to be in that space. I don't get, like, you know, when I am in queer spaces, it's for like all queer people. And not just for, I guess, like queer women and non-binary people who also like women. And so being in a space that was like, specifically for queer women and um, sapphic non-binary people was very eye-opening and really helped me understand myself. Also going back to the fact that my like lesbian identity is connected to my gender identity I think so I've heard from a lot of queer people, you know, kind of saying like, like thinking that everyone else has the same experience that you, you do. And then you like have a realization that people don't like, like for example, a lesbian being like, oh yeah, of course everybody like, of course all women are attracted to other women. That's just a part of being a woman. And then you find out that it's like not, um, <laughs> and that there are women who don't like other women. That's honestly how I felt even before I came out as trans like when I was out as a gay guy even before then I was like I just like assumed not like assumed that all girls like girls but I didn't understand how they couldn't and I like kind of still don't understand how you couldn't but I think that that was like that's a really big deal to me because I think 
like being attracted to women it's a very like intricate and detailed part of my identity as a woman and i'm using that word like woman it's kind of like scary to use that word because you know turfs and like whatever i am feeling comfortable in that word and i'm feeling relatively confident with it i have a decent idea that that's probably where i'm going to end up at some point but i don't know that i'm quite to the point of accepting that fully and i'm trying to also be open-minded because i don't i don't know i don't want to i mean it's fine to like change the labels that you use and all that stuff um like so i'm not like against that but i kind of want it to be like if i'm gonna claim that title i want to be like a hundred percent sure of it um but i do feel like i'm fitting into that and settling into that and i don't know i feel really good about it and i feel like secure i feel like i have really been able to just like connect with like my heart or my soul or like some shit like that i don't know <laughs> but yeah that's what i that's how i feel so thanks for listening <laughs> um i guess that's it if you made it to the end <clears throat> let me know um if you want to if you don't then don't but i do always like to see who made it to the end i always appreciate all of you commenting and watching my videos and enjoying my experience and all of that good kind of stuff so i think that's everything um i will see you at some point probably <laughs> bye